And that original chocolate experience, people just, I mean, I've had people break down weeping. <laughs> New York City, Whole Foods, 40 to 60,000 people come through that health food store in Union Square. We're right there, front center. There's people coming right off the street, armor up. It's New York City, right? Woman comes in, and I'm with this dude. And this, you know, it's one of those guys who kind of like he's on the team, but he doesn't really believe that, you know, like, Chocolate's not really that powerful. Goji bears aren't really that powerful. One of those kind of things. Which is fine. He's from New York. You know, he has that little bit of pessimism and doubt. It's okay. <laughs> so, woman walks in and I said, hey, how you doing? She says, great. What are you guys doing here? I said, we're serving people chocolate. Do you like chocolate? She says, I love chocolate. I said, have you ever had raw chocolate? Like original cacao. Like what chocolate's made out of. The nut that chocolate is made out of. She said, No. I said, would you like to try some? She said, okay. So we made her a little kind of concoction, a little agave, a little chocolate, put it together, and then gave it to her. And she, she ate that. And she, as she was chewing, she literally started crying. <laughs> Next thing I know, she's in the arms of this guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> What, what food is so powerful that somebody walks in off the streets in New York City and you feed them a food and they break down weeping for 10 minutes? That's superfoods. That's the superfood revolution. By the way, I have a book coming out. Superfoods, the food and medicine for man. The, su, su, I'm sorry, superfoods, the food and medicine of the future is going to be out on April 28, 2009. And it's, a, it's exciting. It's a very exciting project. The, the book has been uh, taken up by Random House. So Random House is going to distribute it, which took years. <laughs> and, like, it was like, they came to me and they finally said, okay, we're, we're ready to work with you. And I said, well, I'm not really ready to work with you because I'm going to need this. It's going to have to be that way. It's going to need to be this, that, and the other, this, and that, and the other thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, no problem. I was like, huh? What do you mean no problem? They're like, yeah, whatever you want. All excess profits go to our nonprofit fruit tree planting foundation. <laughs> we, are, we are just about to go down to Brazil and put in 500 fruit trees in 18 elementary schools down there. And we've been <coughs> doing that in America all across the country. Nonstop, ftpf.org, and check it out. We've been doing that nonstop for years, and instead of having kids in UV light, massive EMF bombardment, ADD environment, we take the kids one day a week when we put in the outdoor classroom, and we bring them outside so the whole class takes place in the orchard on a Friday or a Thursday or whatever day at school chooses. <coughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. And then they get that environmental education as part of the whole program. So like, whoa, wait a second. You know, even the Catholic Church now, you know, by, by the way, check this out. <laughs> so a friend of mine, we had never met directly. We had mutual friends. Shows up at a party. I'm at a dinner in Los Angeles. A friend of mine is an amazing Titanic entrepreneur, billionaire dude. And <laughs> one of those guys. I, I don't know what it's like. You gotta really love business to get to that level. I mean, you gotta really be into that, like crunching numbers and stuff. It's like I'm just, you know, I like to do superfoods. <laughs> but anyway, one of those kind of situations. So he has us over for dinner. In the middle of the dinner, he's like, "Hey, get up and tell everyone about superfoods." I'm like, "Okay, goji berries, cacao." So this guy was there, and we had we had mutual friends. And at the end of the night, he's like, "Hey, I gotta get out of here. I, you know, I got I got a plane at six in the morning. By then, it was like one in the morning." And dude, can you hook me up? And I'm like, yeah. So I made him, I literally, all I had was a bag of, of cacao, a bag of goji berries, and a bag of raw cashews. And I made a big bag of that and just put it in one of those giant Ziploc, you know the giant Ziploc now? One of those, and I said, dude, whenever you're tempted for airline food, those stupid peanuts, anything like that, just eat this instead. If you're on the streets of Paris and they're trying to feed you bread, just eat this instead. Well, 
Six weeks later, I get a knock at my door. And it's this guy. I'm like, John, dude, you're looking good. <laughs> he lost 35 pounds without even trying. He was on his way that night to Paris. He was doing business in Paris. He does an investment banking or some kind of whatever that is. I mean, really, whatever that is. What is that? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> and he was literally reading, and I also gave my book Naked Chocolate. So he's walking down the street with naked chocolate in his hand, and he's eating cacao, and then he looks up and he sees Rue de Cacao. There's a street in Paris called Cacao Street. Rue is street in French. <laughs> so he's like, oh, oh my God, he just couldn't believe it. So he goes into the first shop, and there's 20 cacao shops. This is in Paris. There's 20 shops that sell raw cacao right in a row. So he walks in there, and he's got my book, and he has cacao, and he's like... <laughs> And he can't speak a word of French. And she, the woman there at the counter, she can't speak any English, but she's like. <laughs> <laughs> so he replenishes his cacao supply. He ends up hanging down there on root of cacao. Then he ends up going to the Vatican. So he ends up at the Vatican with cacao and my book in the Vatican. <laughs> So he's doing some kind of investment banking or whatever with the Vatican. And he's got my book and cacao and he just can't, he just can't stop talking about it. If anybody's ever done business around the world, you know that most of the business meetings about what you're into at that time and in the last 15 minutes is like, um, okay, where do we sign? What are we doing? Right. right? Has anybody ever done that? So that's kind of what he was doing. He just couldn't stop babbling on about cacao. Well, the Vatican like heard it. They're like, really? Cacao? Okay. Right? Because it's like you know, stronghold South America, Southeast Asia. They're like, yeah, do we, do that? people grow cacao down there. And with the new book, they're doing this whole thing that's called a legacy program where you actually make the planet better. Plant your orchards and gardens and you bequeath that to your family. It's called a legacy program. So they have something. They got fruit trees and stuff. And they're all into this whole thing about cacao because cacao is connected with heart. Right? That whole heart energy. So John's hanging out at my house for a couple days, and he's just telling me these stories. He's showing me pictures. I mean, he literally was like, you couldn't send a spy into the Vatican to get pictures like this. <laughs> he's showing me pictures inside the Vatican. He got the whole books that were literally stolen from Copernicus. <laughs> they just, you know, took it from him. Like his Copernicus' books. And they're like, do you think this is worth anything? I mean, they don't know. Can you believe this is going on? The phone rings. The woman who even takes care of the house for Vinda, she says, it's the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> the Vatican called my house. So I get on the phone. And it's the Vatican on the line. They end up sending this guy, Mikhail, over. He's the, he's the Vatican musician. He pay, plays with Pink Floyd, and this guy's unreal. He's unbelievable. I mean, he is unbelievable. He ends up coming down to Mexico, hanging out with us. To, this whole thing, the Vatican's totally on the cacao now. Now, if they get on with cacao, we can forgive them for all the inquisitions. And, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. You just never know how far it could go, and you never know who's listening. You really don't. That this information, we finally came to a place where we realized we cannot battle ourselves. That if you tell a child, no, don't go into the third cabinet on the bottom on the left. <laughs> this is like this thing we do to ourselves. I can't eat whatever. I, they, this book said, that guru said, this person said, I'm not supposed to do this, that, whatever. If we bypass that, and we just go for what feels good and what we add in that we know is good for ourselves, is good for the planet, and good for the community, then what ends up happening is we then crack a code. We call it add another way.